I'm Kendra Otto. We are at Super Zoo in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are with Michelle a. Evans, one of my fellow Andes representatives. How are you today? Great. Now, uh, so we're going to be working on a Carrie Blue. Let, what are we going to be using? What are you doing? Well, we're going to do this dog in uh, kind of a pet version of the... Uh, we're going to do a short, shorter pet version of a Carrie Blue Terrier just to keep the essence of the breed, but keep it low maintenance for the owner. Okay, that's an excellent idea. So this is something that you would do every day in your shop. It's not a contest trim, not a show trim. Correct. Okay, let's get started. All right, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, use our Andes Pulse Ion uh, lithi lithium battery rechargeable clipper here. This is a new product for us. It's got an uh, adjustable blade. It adjusts in five different lengths from 9 through 40. Uh, it's got a nice grip. It's lightweight. Uh, it's, it charges about one hour is how long it takes, and then it lasts for a solid two hours. Uh, and in a shop like mine, when I'm doing rough-in work with it all day long, which is like your face, feet, and tails, your butts and bellies, pads, things like that, I can get one to last all day long because I'm not using it continuously for two hours. So I only have to charge mine once a day, and it's a really handy tool. And I think that two-hour run, run time on that battery alone is the, fastest, or the longest running battery on the market. Isn't that correct? I believe so. And uh, also the vendors, you can just keep working, but um, the vendors right now are also giving away an extra battery, which is a $70 value. So the purchase of one of these clippers, you get an extra battery. I think that's pretty cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Because having an extra battery is always a good idea. Yes, it is. So I've got this set on the 15 setting, and I'm just going to clean out these pads real good. This is really important for pet dogs because you can see that we've even got some, some little stuff tangled in here, and you can get little knots in the pads, and, and it's really uncomfortable for them. So we want to just keep these nice and clean. If you're in a wet climate, too, keeping this shaved out allows the feet to, to dry much quicker than if they have all that hair in there. Well, especially if they have seasonal allergies and their feet are irritated, the 15 setting also helps not irritate their feet. That's great. Yes, that's true. And you can see that I'm kind of edging the toes, too, to get the excess hair off the outside. It'll just save me some scissoring later, and it's so handy with such a lightweight tool to knock some of that hair away and not have to use your scissors later. So you can see how we're getting some tangles out of there. Really important for pet maintenance. Now, is this your dog? No, this is one of my client's dogs. It's a dog that I groom in my shop. I have competed with this dog as well. Um, I took this dog, uh, actually, I won the, the um, all other purebreds at Hershey last year with this dog and took it to Best in Show and actually didn't win Best in Show, but we were up there nonetheless. Nice accomplishment. Yeah, that was great. Okay, so I'm going to just use this on the rectum too. You want to be sure I can just go from side to side on the rectum and not straight up and down. Uh, it just, it's a little safer to do it this way. I'm also going to take out the whole back of the tail with this still on a 15 blade. We want that nice and clean back there. Are you taking that all the way to the tip of the tail? I am. And I'm going to knock the sides off. Again, this is just such a lightweight, handy tool, and this will just save me scissor time later. I like the rubber grips on it because I spin my clipper around in my hand a lot. And if it doesn't have the rubber grips, I drop things. Yeah, that is, I love the way this feels in my hand. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, his crotch down here too. I'm still on a 15, but I'm not necessarily shaving him super close. I'm just kind of skimming off some of this hair down here. It's a really nice lightweight clipper. Clean him up all down in here. You want to be careful not to get uh, too far down on the inside of the thigh. But we will go ahead and take off just this area between. All right, just a strip down the back here. And you clean that up. Now, normally, this is one of the few breeds that you would do this on. Most of the time, we don't want to see this on a pet dog. But you do want to see it on a Kerry Blue, and there are a few other breeds that it's that you would do that for. All right, we'll go around here. All right, so we're gonna just, I'm just gonna lift up the side here and I'm just gonna make, just take off just in front of his, right, just clean that up right up to the belly button.
Now, I've heard, um, I believe the weight on this clipper is about seven ounces. Isn't that correct? That is. Uh, it's, it's, it's really handy. I'm just, I truly enjoy it. They sent it to me uh, when they were still in the process of developing it. And I was really excited that they were coming out with this because it's a, it's an, it's a marked improvement on anything else in, that's out there right now by any other manufacturer. And it's just, I'm really excited to have this tool. Big time saver. Yes, it is. It's a very quiet running piece of equipment, so when you're up here around the head and the ears, it's really, you can see that he's not affected or bothered by the fact that I have a large, a, you know, a large loud clipper near his ear. And I'm just cleaning up the edge of the, I'm cleaning up the inside flat part of the ear here. I'm just holding it flat and going toward the outside edge as I go around. And I'm still on a 15. I don't have to do that one. All right, so now I'm gonna do his cheek here. Basically just from the corner of his eye to his ear opening. So you can see that I've just gone to the corner of the eye and I made a straight line down here. Clean up all that in front of the ear. And just from behind where the ear attaches to the head, I'm gonna bring this all off. This clipper leaves a very nice, clean finish. It really does. You reverse it. Why would you reverse it underneath his throat for the folks at home? I just did that just to pick up that hair because I just want to go against the grain right there to get it nice and smooth. Now, uh, I just saw you touching the front of his throat. Is there a certain stopping point? Uh, you want to look, when you're, when you're feeling down the front of the dog, if you just run your finger down with their head parallel to the tabletop, just before it dips in is where you want to stop your shaving point there. Just like a poodle. Yeah. Only this is more of a U than a V. Right. So, I know I'm doing the wrong side, but I... want to get that. She's matching the other side. Now, um, tell us a little bit about your competitive career while you're doing that. Well, I, um, I competed a, for uh, 2009, 10, and 11, and I'm not competing anymore, um, except for that I uh, have enough points to have made the team, the Groom Team USA that's going to uh, Barcelona, Spain next year. How many points did you have last year? 115, I believe. That's a lot of points, and that's one of the records of the top point holders. I didn't know that. <laughs> I know Pina and Julia Stosky, and I believe Lindsay are the only ones that have gone over 100. Congratulations. Thank you. This is our um, AGC uh, L Lightspeed. Um, I wanted to use this clipper for this demonstration in particular today because it has a light, and this is a dark colored dog. Um, so, and I'm using that over um, one of our 90th anniversary uh, uh, 10 Ultra Edge blades. And then I've got our new um, steel magnetic uh, clipper comb here. This is a number one. And this clipper comb actually adjusts from a 30 to a 10. So you can use it over a 30 blade or a 10 blade. And this happens to be a 10, so it's adjusted for a 10. And I'm just going to set in his... Um, what we would call flat work here on this dog. It's on a terrier called a flat work. Uh, and it's basically um, from behind your ear in an arcing line to your elbow coat and then flat off around the front. Just draw a straight line to the floor. And you can see how that light really lights up that coat and I can really see what I'm doing. I just think that, I mean, you can just see how it just lights it right up. set his top line in with a one. And again, this is more of a pet trim than it is a, a show trim. So we can take it pretty darn tight and just get this down to a maintainable coat length for the owner. And even on some pet trims, you don't have to leave a neckline or um, anything like Bichons, Kerry Blues, Poodles. You don't have to leave as much neck coat as you would on a show dog. That's correct.
it does help balance the trim out a little bit, but we all know that owners won't take care of it. The first shop that I started working at, we left necklines on all the Bichons and they always came in matted and uh, the owner wanted us to brush them out and we finally had enough and just said, hey, look, you know, the owners aren't maintaining these. Can we talk them into taking the necklines off? And it did work and there were happier dogs. That's great. And I will actually run a clipper comb over this to get it down to a length. I'm just going to use several different clipper combs to bring this together. Right. So you can see I did the flat work with this blade, but I also brought in uh, right here um, to, to start blending into my neck coat with a one and also set my top line with a one. And you'd want to find where your shoulder blades are and start your clipper work behind the shoulder blades, correct? That's correct. And his shoulder blade is here, so I've started back here to be sure and get that accomplished. I'm going to switch to a little bit longer blade here now. Uh, we will go with a zero comb. I can find it. We'll just do, we'll do an A since it's sitting here. It's just a little bit longer. Um, i got to adjust that to the 10 blade. A little bit longer to do uh, the rib spring. So I'm just going to run that right on down around. And when I'm explaining to people how to blend off the side of a dog so that you don't end up with a, a short area with a long skirt, is I put a comb underneath the dog to mark the center line. And I'll actually wrap the clipper right around and draw a line right to the center line. And then that just skims your skirt off really nicely. You can see how that how that blends and keeps that from being a, a solid line. We don't want that to be a line across the dog. That's an excellent tool. Thank you, Michelle. Well, you're welcome. I'm gonna use this longer blade over the hip coat too. Uh, and when you're putting your hip pattern in on something like this, you just wanna bend the leg, find the shortest part back here, the shortest spot. You can see when I bent that and just stay above that when you're setting in your, your the length of your hip coat out here. And when she talks about hips, not saddlebags or big giant puffy hips. The reason why you would leave extra hair on the outside of a carry blue leg is to show their muscle. There's uh, a lot of terrier breeds that have muscle and that breed standard calls for a display of a well-muscled looking dog. And sometimes if you don't have the muscle, you can always create it with hair. Isn't that correct? That's true. That's true. And I'm just choosing some different lengths uh, to do this with. Uh, just to give the dog a little bit more style, it really doesn't take but maybe 30 extra seconds at the end of a groom to change out your blade a few times to put some different lengths here and there. Gives the dog a lot more style and the owner actually probably would still think that the dog was all one length all over because they don't understand that we've left it a little longer here and a little longer there. Um, but if they were to take it to another shop down the street and got, and got the dog done all one length all over, then they would realize how much more stylized the dog is at your salon. So I want to show you how to put this blade on. This, this, uh, this is the steel magnetic comb. You actually just uh, put the um, teeth of your uh, blade right in there and it just snaps right on. This is a 10 uh, and it just snaps right on there and it's very secure. And I've put a two on that. And I'm just gonna tighten this up right here in the front a little bit just to get him a little tighter right there. I'd already want to gone over it with a one, but I want to go over it just to tighten it down a little bit more. And I'm also going to take this shorter length right from the bend and go up the back. And when you reverse it, it also helps cut down on some scissor work, right? It does. Just by all of this clippering that I'm doing is going to improve on, on your speed and efficiency in your shop. I'm also going to take this two blade over the top of the head. So I'm just going to come in here and just flat do this flat. So you can see that I didn't come in behind the occiput. I didn't come in behind the top of the head. I drew a straight line off here. And that'll just get it so it's nice and flat. And then the last clipper comb I'm going to use is one to do the back of the neck. And I'm going to use a C for that which is also a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter. Everybody uses a different um, system for knowing uh, 
what those are. Some people would call that a C, some people would call it a 7 8 and some people would call it a 22 millimeter. And uh, what's nice about the Andes combs is that it's, all three are marked. So if you're talking to a girlfriend on the phone <laughs> tell, or a student or someone telling them what blade to use where, they can look on there and see whatever terminology it is that you're, you happen to be using. That's an excellent feature. I'm going to come in here and just kind of take some of this off, and that'll just save me some scissoring later. So you can see that all looks like it's all one length now. To the layman, that looks like it's all one length, but it gives us just a little bit more style to uh, create some balance in the dog. Now you could, uh, the, for this particular set of snap-on combs, uh, the E is the longest comb that, that comes in this set. And you could uh, do an E comb on the legs for a pet owner who wants it to still have some style but, but doesn't want it to be uh, too, too long. Um, I'm gonna see how much that's gonna take off here. I'm just going to come down a little bit with the e-comb to take some of that coat off the outside, and I think that that's probably good enough. And then we'll scissor the, the rest of the legs there. Okay, um, for the outside of the ears, I'm going to go back to the, um, the pulse eye on here, and we're going to do that on a 10 for the outside of the ear. And I'm just going to go right to the skull and take off the excess hair there on the outside of the ear. And I'm actually shaving it so that I'm always going toward the edge of the ear leather and not getting onto the side. Is there a good direction for the folks at home to angle the clipper when they're clipping the ear? I'm not sure I understand the question. What's the proper way to clip the ear? How do you want to hold it? Is there a good direction to follow? Do you want to go down the edge of the ear or towards the outside? Towards the outside, yeah. You want to always keep going toward the outside of the ear leather. Get that cleaned up really nicely. And I'm going to show you a trick with this. I would put this on the switch your um, pulse ion to the 40 blade setting. And this is really good for people who are chicken to go around the edge of the ear with a scissor. You can actually lay the ear leather flat on your fingers and come around the edge and just kind of cut it right off. And it's super, super fast, really clean, gives it a nice crisp edge without scissoring. You can see how clean that cleans that up. And so I'm keeping that perpendicular to the leather. So I'm actually going around it sort of like a cookie cutter on the outside of the ear leather. This is the five in one blade, right? It goes from a nine to a 40? Yes, this one uh, clipper is, this one blade is adjustable in five positions from a nine, a, a nine, 10, 15, 30, and 40. So you can see how nicely that edged the ear it's nice and clean and no scissors, just quick. Uh, that's something that even uh, maybe your bather prepper could do the ears for you before it even comes to your table for the body coat, so. All right. So the next thing I'm gonna demonstrate is um, the nail clipping. Some of, these are some of Andis' hand tools. And I'm really excited about these too because they're very inexpensive, which is awesome. Um, but they're, they're quality. Uh, this is the slicker brush that we have. Um, I like the size of it. I like the way the handle feels in my hand. Um, and most of all, I like that it's just the right amount of um, firmness on these. Uh, it's not too hard, it's not too soft. Um, this nail clipper they sent me, um, I thought, yeah, it's just gonna be a nail clipper like all the other nail clippers. Um, but a couple things that I like about this one especially is that it is super sharp, so there's no smashing of the toenail before uh, you cut it. It just snips it right off, and this, that smashing is what makes them flinch and that what they don't like. The, the cutting is actually not the problem. Plus, I like to use a large toenail clipper on everything, even tiny little toenails, because the, the long handles give you leverage, so it makes it quick. Um, so that, and I really like the way this fits into my hand. So I'm gonna just demonstrate toenails here real quick. 
You can see how quickly and easily the toenail clipper works. And you can see that he's not the least bit bothered by that. Is there a right or a wrong angle to clip your toenails? Um, well, it, it's, it's ideal to clip them more, uh, if this is the, the curve of the nail, it's ideal to clip them more this way than it is with the curve of the nail. Um, but because we're going to grind them, as long as you get the bulk of the nail off and then grind them, it's, it's usually it's, you can grind them to whatever shape that you want. And the reason why I clip them and then grind them is because that's less dust in the air from grinding that I have to manage. Very true. That's an excellent tip. Um, there are so many dogs out there that prefer one over the other, so it's always good to be able to grind them or clip them. Um, so as Michelle was talking, you would want to clip against the curve if your dog only tolerates clipping the nails. Absolutely. And now, one thing about um, grinding, and, and I love this grinder. There's a couple things I really like about the Andes grinder. One is that it's, it's super, super lightweight. It's really, really fast, and it's darn near silent, which is, I just love that. Um, they put this rubber cup, cup on it, um, and that gives it a nice grip. It's small, it's lightweight. I don't mind the cord because it gives me the power that I need so that when I'm doing the toenails, I'm not bumping. It doesn't slow down and bump. It has no hesitation, so it just grinds them off really nice and smooth. Now, when you're doing a dog with long coat on the nails, you don't want to wind that up into your grinder, so you just pull all that hair out of your way. And if you stay up and down instead of this way, you have a less chance of picking that coat up. So we'll just grind that, and you can see how you just don't get that same bump that you get with some of the rechargeable ones with the battery. See how smooth it is? Because it's so powerful. It doesn't have that bump, and I just love that about this tool. And you can see that the dog has no issue with it whatsoever. He's very relaxed. Yeah, because the tool works. Because it's not slow and it's not causing a problem. Okay, so then I also wanted to demonstrate, this is our um, new Andis rake. Uh, and on, on a dog like this, when they have all this coat on their face, their foreface, I like to just clean that up a bit with a rake, and you can get right in there and clean that up and make it lay nice and flat and smooth. You can see all of that coat that I just got out with just minimal effort. Can you show the teeth to the camera? Absolutely. So this is what it looks like. And it's not necessarily an undercoat rake, it's a stripping rake. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, so you're going to just kind of clean that up. And I, it's just a, a nice, useful tool in lots of situations, but especially on something like that. I was really excited that I had a carry blue so that I could demonstrate this tool today. <laughs> Look at the bulk that it, it's been yeah. taken out. Now you can see his hair looks smoother, shinier, straighter. It just really cleaned that up. And that was just with a few strokes of the tool. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, very nice. This I would do with scissors, so I suppose that's a demo for another time. Well, thank you very much, Michelle. We really appreciate it.